just tell me a little bit about how you first got involved with the film in the first instance. Sure, well, I've worked with Roger and, and the same kind of team of people, Kevin and, um, and the editor Christina and Louise, my supervisor. We've worked together um, on several films, but I've been the music editor rather than okay. composer previously. And a lot of people don't know what that job is. I'm not sure I know what that job is. It kind of means looking after the music in a way, <laughs> um, but not necessarily writing the notes. Um, on this one, um, I ended up being the composer, which you know was, was, was a thrilling journey for us all. And it was nice to feel that like our relationships had developed. And separately from this film, my career had come on a bit. And they knew that I was sort of more of a genuine contender for this kind of film. And um, I, I did some themes early on, and it went really well. And um, we kind of it just went really, yeah, it was really, I don't know, something quite sweet about it, really. Um, I think. It was nice to feel like I'd stepped up and it was a, a new relationship, you know? In terms of the, the process of scoring, I mean, this obviously at the face of it, it's a costume drama, but it's so much more than that. And I was talking to the guys beforehand and saying about how unpredictable it is and you don't really know where the character, especially Rachel's character, whether she's doing things or not doing things. I mean, as a composer, how do you approach this kind of material? Yeah, well, sometimes you need to be even-handed and ambiguous. And, not, I mean, and that was a big note from Roger always, because she is inscrutable. We, we don't know what she's thinking. Whereas Sam Claflin's character, Philip, he's an open book. And you know exactly every single thing he's thinking, And because he's, he's a bit more immature and not very worldly, the exact opposite of her. So musically, it's the same thing. There's, another, there's two shots in the film that are really short, where you see Rachel on her own without Sam there. And um, those two points, Roger was always really specific about, because that's the only point when potentially I could be commenting on what she is thinking mm. when she's not presenting to him, you know? But that, those are tiny moments in, in, the, in the scope of the whole film, of course. When did you, um, in terms of getting involved, I mean, is it a long process to score a film? I'm always quite fascinated by you know, scoring everything else. Was it quite a long process to, to finish this one? Or? Um, the actual, once, we, once I started at the beginning and finished at the end, that bit, after I'd written a few themes, that bit was quick. So it was maybe three or four weeks. But um, before that, I'd written a bunch of themes uh, on, at the piano with Roger and Kevin. And they sort of said, that one's great, that one's awful, you know, this one's in between. And so that was quite early in, in the editing process. And I gave them to the cutting rumors as um, uh, demos. And then they had those to play with in some of the, some of the scenes. Um, but then it was when the picture finally became not quite locked, but very close, then I really just like I said, pretty much start at the beginning, finish at the end. Taking those themes that I know they liked, when they gave me that, those video files, I could, I could hear, oh, they've used my piano theme now, I'm gonna use the same theme like they have, but I'm gonna make it bigger and I'm gonna orchestrate it for oboes and pianos and whatever, you know. So, um, but it, it was literally a linear process. And then what you do, you get to the end, reel six, then you watch the whole film through and go, ah, oh, I got better, didn't I? And you end up going back to reel one again and making those cues, you've sort of learned a hell of a lot by doing the film, so I mean, you've learned what the music should be. So real five and six were in really good shape, and then real one and two, I did, I did, I revisited a few things. You know, that's quite often how it happens. Um, so yeah, how was it working with Roger? Because obviously, I mean, I've mean, worked with him before, but this is kind of his baby. That he wrote the screenplay as well. I mean, was there a bit of a difference in him in terms of working with him? That obviously was quite precious about the movie, or was it as easy as it has been before? It felt pretty similar to say High Park and Hudson that we worked on and th things like that. Um, I think it is more his baby, like you say, because he wrote it, and so he, he feels a a real personal uh, responsibility and attachment for it. But um, he's an incredibly decisive filmmaker. He really, he, t he really knows what he wants, especially once you're getting the edit starting to take shape. He just, musically, he, he'll just say yes or no, and he's, he just knows exactly what he wants, um, which is really um, great, to be honest. It's really um, helpful. Because uh, if he doesn't know, he'll just say, I'm not sure yet, leave it with me. But he's, yeah, he's very um, confident which is great. I was talking to some of the cast and they obviously, he gave them notes about what he thought the characters were, were thinking and everything else and about the character of Rachel, about whether she did it or didn't do it. Did you leave the process thinking one way or another about whether she, she did the things she was accused of? Or? You're asking me did she or didn't she? Yeah. I don't know, who's to blame? Yeah, who's to blame? It's so <laughs> ambiguous, that's what I quite liked about the movie. Absolutely. The ending particularly is yeah, very well, ambiguous. Spoiler, hashtag. But, um, but yeah, it, it is. And that the idea is you go down, well, my, my take of what the idea is, is you go down the pub and you're you're all arguing about, you know, did she or didn't she do it? And that's that's kind of the point, I think. I think the whole, from what I've gathered, all the, even the film community in terms of critics and audiences alike are all, mm. there's, there's so many polar diff differences. But that's good that it's got yeah. people talking. Yeah, well, that, that's what the book is. And, you know, I, I actually didn't read the script, but I did read the book before, long before we started this. And it is, you don't know. She's inscrutable. We don't know, did she, didn't she? Um, it's, that's what's so clever and nuanced about the book and that Roger has so successfully adapted onto screen 
is that ambiguity. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!